I welcome you to Isabel G's blog. Today's G's is about Pastor Jerry Eze. He spoke about how God showed himself up in his church and he spoke about his little beginning. Thank you. I, I have seen miracles. I've, I've taught anybody who said God is not alive. I've seen it. I've seen it. Even there are times when I pray scared and God still answers. Jerry Eze is the senior pastor of Streams of Joy International Church in Umohia, Southeast Nigeria. It's a young ministry making impact in the lives of thousands of mainly young people from across the nation. Something remarkable started happening in my church, which I found very exciting. It's not a prayer meeting, but a group of young people gathered together and all they said to me, say, Pastor, you know what? We just feel like praying. So every now and then I hear their prayers all around and all that. When you light the fire, the Bible says in the days of his power, his people shall be willing. Now, even though that the Lord had big programs and big projects, Jerry says his call into the ministry came while he was only a child. But only his mother was aware of the divine mandate. My mom would say several years ago, even when I didn't even realize that I had a calling for ministry, that God had spoken to her and that the hand of God was upon my life and I was going to serve God behind the pulpit. She was very explicit about that. Jerry and his three siblings grew up with their single mother. Uh, she didn't live a very, very, very good life. And she had four of us from different men. And, um, and so that's the kind of background that I came from. And so when my mom got born again, um, she so regretted what she did. And she devoted her life to bringing up her children in the fear of the Lord. There were things that other children did that I could not do. There were fun that other children had I could not have. My mom was someone who would take me out on early morning cry, you know, that the evangelism in the early hours of the morning. And when we get out there, I would expect my mom to preach. And she turns to me and says, you are the one that is supposed to be preaching. So the more I grew, the more the reality of the words of God for me became evident in my own life, not just what my mom was saying. Life was tough for Jerry and his family, but they were content with the little that they had. I love to work for God. I did everything doable. I would sweep the church, I would clean the church. I wasn't doing that because anybody was mandating me or was looking for anything. I just loved God like that. And so a very kind couple met me in church and decided to pay my way through school. Though Jerry knew he had the call of God upon his life, taking care of his family was priority to him. I hated poverty, so I said anything it would take me to break the backbone of poverty, I would do it. And then pastors were not exactly a worthy examples of people who God can bless. So I went to do a secular job. I started working in a media house. From a media house, I went to work for the World Bank Project on HIV and AIDS. So from the World Bank Project on HIV and AIDS, I moved up to work with the United Nations. I had dreams, I had major dreams about how I was going to head the UN one day and all that. And everybody, when I came into the UN, I was the youngest member of staff of UNFPA. So, and everybody was like, oh, this, you have a lot of future here. But Jerry also felt strongly that the Lord was calling him to quit his secular job for the ministry. I remember it was, it was the 1st of December when I wrote that resignation letter. And then I wrote it, my boss said to me, please keep it, think about it. You don't know who you are, you don't know who you're going to become, and all that. I told him, this is what God wants me to do right now. I was crying when I dropped the letter. Though it was a difficult decision to make, Jerry says nothing could be more fulfilling than seeing what God is doing through his ministry. My greatest excitement is when I see lives change. And when I see God move in spectacular and miraculous manner, when I see things like commercial sex workers who come to church, not because you preach the salvation message, but they say there was something about the atmosphere that broke them down. You see, there are times that God does things that you really don't understand because it's all God by himself. Every time I see God do the unthinkable, I'm lost for it. Because 
in the past three months in our in our in our church it's been it's been it's like i don't know what is going on i sometimes i could it's like my head is swimming because everything you see a blind eye opening and it, sometimes it's not even the prayer you made you see women for 12 years who couldn't conceive conceiving you see people who are given the medical reports god changing you see children with autism god healing them you see people with tumors and every and i say no can i say god I can't do these things. It's only you that can do it. So, I, I, I've seen miracles. I've, I've taught anybody who said God is not alive. I've seen it. I've seen it. Even there are times when I pray scared, and God still answers. Jerry believes that the world is about to experience a revival. And God is raising a new generation of people from all over the world to manifest His glory. If we thought we had seen anything in the past, is nothing compared to what is about to unleash. Because there are people scattered all over the world. Now, this time around, they are not trying to say, I'm in ministry to get a car. I'm in ministry to get a bigger house. I mean, but there are passionate people who are saying, let the name of Jesus be praised. Let them know that there is a God who is able to turn things around. Let the gospel of the kingdom reach to the uttermost part of the earth and so that's what God is doing so I think that that's a generation a generation not a generation of people who want to be seen but a generation of people who love him first who say to God God you know what you are all that matters even if we don't have anything at all that makes ministry tick loving you is the best thing that can ever happen to us like share subscribe and comment